Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel and in this video, I want to talk about a very useful knob called as the fallback knob while configuring LSAP. Now we already know LSAP is used for, you know, creating your port channels. And why do you use port channels? Because you want to aggregate, you want to aggregate your interfaces and thereby increase your bandwidth, right? So LSAP is just a protocol used for uh, you know negotiating uh, when you have two or more interfaces and you want to create a port channel perfect now that we know the context what is this whole uh, uh, you know fallback feature right so let me take an example so let's assume we've got a distribution switch we have an access switch okay let's say the distribution switch um, you know um, already has the configs on it right so it is a switch which has been operating for some time and both of these interfaces I have been I've been put in LSAP right so um, you know you have an SAP on them and they have been bundled so there is a port channel which has been created uh, with these two interfaces one slash one and one slash two perfect now let's assume that this switch on the other side is a new switch it's a completely new switch when I say new switch I mean you've just taken the switch out of the box right and you've gone and connected it so as a result what is going to happen is it is going to be factory uh, reset right so you're gonna have factory reset configs that means on on this particular interfaces you're not going to have LSAP now because of that what will happen is your port channel will be in the down state right and and the member interfaces will not be forwarding one slash one one slash two will be down port channel will be down right it will be in the block state why because LSAP for LSAP to work we know that on both the sides you need the relevant configs but because this side the access which is a new de new device right unless you put the LSAP configs on it this port channel is going to be down now you might think okay this is not a big problem the simple solution for this is to just connect a console to this access switch and put the LSAP configs yes that is a solution nothing wrong with that but what if you want to do something called as zero touch provisioning right you might have heard of zero touch provisioning right uh, it's very self explanatory as well the whole point of zero touch provisioning is your switch should come online right and it should get all the right configurations without you doing any configurations without you using the console that's the whole point of zero touch provisioning. but zero touch provisioning will not work in this setup why because the moment this access switch let's assume uh, tries to do DHCP right um, DHCP this guy is in block state so as a result DHCP will not go through as a result the access switch will not get an IP if the access switch doesn't get an IP it can't talk to the zero touch provisioning controller right now in case of uh, uh, you know uh, Aruba uh, Aruba products right they use something called a central right which is like a zero it's like the central pane of glass for configuring management of all Aruba devices so basically the access switch will not be able to talk to central um, you know if it is not able to get an IP right and all of this problem is happening because you have uh, LSAP configured on the uh, upstream device here right now how do you um, I mean how do you kind of uh, put in a solution here right um, without 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 having the engineer to explicitly configure the access switch the solution is the fallback feature right so how this really works is let me just get rid of it so how the fallback feature really works is the moment you configure fallback right on the port channel here so you're putting your fallback feature here the moment you do this the um, interfaces one slash one and one slash two one of the interface right will be forwarding right one of the interfaces will be chosen and it will start to forward let's assume in our case it is going to be this interface which is one slash one right the other way other interface will still be blocked reason is because you don't want to create some sort of a loop so one of the interface which is part of the port channel right will start to forward traffic will be in the up state now if this works then it is this is going to really work out for you right because now the access switch can you know request uh, can trigger using its ZTP process it can go out get an IP address and then talk to your controller download the configs and then you know once it downloads the configs it is going to get the LSAP configs here as well and then the normal port channel will, will form right so the the whole concept of fallback is to just remember the word unbond right is to unbond 
the interfaces in this case the two interfaces were one slash one slash one and one slash one slash two so these two were in the port channel but the moment you configure fallback what will happen is even though right um, even though lscp is not configured here right uh, what it is going to do is it is going to pick one of the interface and it is going to forward it it is going to put it in upstate or it is going to forward it right so traffic on that particular interface um, right will be will be in the forwarding state and as a result your um, network will be functional right to do its uh, um, to do things like zdp and things like that right so you see the whole point of fallback is to basically unbond um, you know your port channel interfaces um, and uh, basically uh, to kind of get you out of that blocking state right if you did not have fallback like i said your port channel both the interfaces will be down your port channel will be down and no traffic will be allowed right and you will never be able to get this access switch online uh, you'll not be able to do ztp on it right so this is a very interesting feature so now now that we know what this is let me just give a quick demo of how this works okay so i have a couple of switches here let me pull that up all right so like i said i have a couple of switches the distribution and access uh, like completely reset right doesn't have any conflicts so if i do show run you will probably not find anything apart from some you know very minimal conflicts right so what we'll start by doing is we'll just put uh, some very basic configurations on it right so what i'll do is let's let's first configure the distribution switch so let's go and put in probably the host name right and let's uh, introduce a vlan right i'm just going to use a vlan called as 4000 and let's put an ip address on this um, you know vlan let's put a create a svi so it is going to be i already have the configurations typed out so that you know um, i don't waste a lot of time on the video so but just for your reference i'm just creating a vlan 4000 and adding 10.1.1 as a ip on the distribution switch okay now let's create the port channel right the way you create port channels on um, um, you know on the Aruba devices is pretty simple so all you do is uh, you add the um, interface lag one right I'm going to disable routing and we will also um, enable the LSAP mode which is active we will enable um, you know the we'll put the interface or we'll put the port channel in trunk right and it we are going to allow the VLAN 4000 okay once you have created the lag interface all you have left to do is put the member interfaces in the uh, put the member interfaces or basically add the lag to the member interfaces right so the first member inter uh, the member interfaces are going to be interface one slash one slash one and one slash one slash two so for the member interfaces all we are going to do is again disable routing uh, vlan trunk allowed and this thing right that's as simple as that if you want to quickly have a look at the configs we can do, do that so you see the configs are pretty straightforward right nothing complicated at all so we just have the vlan we have the interface lag configuration and one slash one and one slash two have been added to this lag right and we have the svi perfect let me quickly now do the same configs on the other guy as well right which is the access switch so let's do that so we're gonna put the configs on the access switch um, so we're gonna put the vlan okay let's create the svi okay so svi is good let's then uh, create the lag interface okay and uh, finally we've got um, so we have the lag interface created what else um, we would next need to basically put the two interfaces um, in the particular lag which we just now created Perfect, so I think that should be good. Let me clear the screen and show you the running config. Okay, there you go. Pretty same as, very similar to the configs on the distribution switch, except here the config is 10.1.1.10, right? The IP is different. So if I want, I can get onto my distribution switch right now. Actually, let's look at the status of the interfaces. Show interface brief, you see the one slash one and one slash two are up. Let's also look at um, show LACP interfaces, right? The port channel interfaces. And you can see right now the port channel 1 slash 1, 1 slash 2, LA lag is lag 1, the state is in up state, it is forwarding, right? Both the interfaces are forwarding. So this is perfect. This is like correct configurations. Now if I can even ping 10.1.1.10. 1 
perfect everything is working as of now so this is like this is a scenario where you have a normal lscp working between these two you have bundled the interfaces and things are working okay now let's try to uh, break this so to break this what i'm going to do is so right now you, as you see again let me just flash this show interface brief sorry let me get rid of that so if i do uh, show lscp interface right so you can see right now the output on the distribution switch you can see for both the interfaces the state is in the forwarding state it is in the up state okay now what i'll do is i'll get onto my access switch and this time what i'll do is i will um i will do uh, i mean ideally i could have done the other option right which i explained factory reset the switch instead of that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove um, the lacp config I'm, I'm going to remove the lag config from the interfaces right so i'm going to get into the interface one slash one slash one and one slash one slash two and just gonna do lag no lag one okay so there you go no lag one um, and what i'll also do is i will uh, individually put um, you know now that we don't have lag i'm going to enable the individual interfaces right um, with the trunk so what i'll do is uh, so i did no lag now i'm gonna do no routing on these interfaces um, vlan trunk allowed don't worry i'll show you the configs what i intend to do 4000 and no shot okay now if i show you the configurations here on the switch what i really ended up doing was as you see here um, the lag is still he available here but it has been removed the interfaces have been removed from the lag okay so you see one slash one doesn't have the lag config instead one slash one is a trunk interface with VLAN being 4000 one slash two is also the same thing okay but the important thing is the port channel the members the interfaces have been removed from the LACP uh, more active right so the interfaces are no longer part of the port channel which means the interfaces will not be sending LACP BPDUs or the you know PDU packets right as a result the LACP should not work so what we'll do here is just to kind of uh, before checking the state of the port channel I'm just going to bounce the interfaces once, one slash one slash two. I'm just going to do shut and no shut. Okay, perfect. Now let's run the same command which we ran here and see if this what has happened to the state. There you go. Right. So as you see here, because we removed the uh, uh, interfaces from LACP on the peer device on the access device, the interfaces, the member interfaces here, have gone into the block state perfect so they have gone into the block state we can actually run this command on the other one as well ideally there should not be anything because we have removed it from the say as you see there is no member interfaces anymore right makes sense but here the member interfaces are there but it is in the block state but because it is in block if i try to ping this time 10.1.10 things are not going to work you see network is not reachable so this is the exact problem right what we are tra trying to solve with the fallback feature when you have situation like this where you have lacp on one side but you don't have lacp on the other side right what is going to happen if you ping things are going to be unreachable how do you solve this extremely simple all you have to do is go on to the lag interface perfect and let's just put this one command which is lacp fallback and if I do a question mark here, there are two options here. You can use the same feature even if you are using VSX, right? If in the Aruba's world, VSX is very similar to Cisco's VPC. So if you are using multi-chassis port channels, then you have to use the command LACP fallback. If you are using non-multi-chassis port channels, then you have to use LACP fallback static. Perfect. So now let's uh, actually let me scroll a little bit top because I have the output right. So you see here the previous output was when I ran show LACP interfaces it was in block state. Now let's see what is going to happen just by adding this one command. Show LACP interfaces and there you go. One of the interfaces has gone to up state right. Which means ideally if I do dot one dot ten there you go you are able to ping now. Perfect. This is what we can achieve by, um, you know, using the fallback feature. Now, just some bonus content here. 
you might ask the question okay uh, what if i shut the interface right so let's try that so if i get to let's actually go to so we saw that show lscp interface we was we saw that one slash one was forwarding right is in the upstate what if i shut it so let's go to one slash one and shut it so if you shut the interface what is going to happen the lscp fallback feature will end up using the next interface so in this case we have the other interface so let me go and show you that there you go right because you shut down one slash one it is now using one slash two the ping will still work ping dot 10 dot uh, 1 dot dot 10 right there you go the ping is still working right now next question right what if i bring back the interface interface 1 slash 1 slash 1 no shut right if i bring back the interface do you think uh, again will 1 slash 1 slash 1 uh, end up forwarding let's check that so i did a no shut now and let's see show lscp interface you see here though you brought back one slash one it has gone to the lscp block so there is no preemption happening right because one slash one slash two was forwarding it will continue to forward even if you bring back one slash one slash one so it is in block state right and the ping will still work which is 10 dot 1 dot 10 dot 10 perfect so you see the main use case of this feature right this feature is really useful if you are planning to do things like zero touch provisioning, it's also very useful in data centers, right? With P, uh, PXC and all of that. Those are again, different use cases, but um, very simple feature, just a single CLI, like I showed you, right? Show run interface lag one, right? As you see here, it's just only one single CLI, LSCP fallback static. But by putting this uh, CLI, what you can achieve is that uh, you can make, make your port channel unbound, right? Um, you know, uh, so that you can now use, um, you, you can basically make your port channel unbound uh, because your peer device is not having LSCP configurations yet. So you can make one of your interface to forward traffic. That way your network is not blocked, right? You, you have a way to kind of use the port channel even if you don't have a port channel up yet, right? Once the port channel is um, back up, right? Um, it will it will uh, once the configurations have been put on the peer device lacp pdus are going to come in and the port channel is going to come up right so a quick this was a quick video i just wanted to give this nugget of sorts while you're designing your network use this cool feature it's going to be very handy okay uh yeah that's a lot uh, that, that that's it for now thanks a lot for watching have a good one bye